Hey, it's Christy Friesen here, and I have a quick little show you how to play with pan pastels on polymer clay. So I just thought I would demonstrate a little bit on how to use pan pastel. Now, pan pastel comes in little containers like this. Um, it's a pan, and it is a special kind of pastel that is mixed with a kind of a binding agent so that it's very creamy, very intense in coloring, and I freaking love them. So I just thought I'd show you a little how-to on maybe some of the best ways to kind of utilize pan pastel. Since they aren't cheap, why should you buy them? Well, let's take a look and see what happens. Now, this is made out of polymer clay, and I purposely made the little um, sea dragon here out of just all one color, very neutral. I haven't used any of my colors of the clays to add any fun nuance to it because we're going to do that all with pan pastel. And then the background does have color to it, but we'll also use some pan pastel to kind of pop it. So I recommend a couple of things here. Um, I really like these particular brushes. It comes in a whole set, but these filbert head ones are just really nice. Uh, this might be a different one, but it's sort of a rounded one. It's I find it's very nice for having broad strokes, which seems to work better. And then I also have just a little carpet square to clean my brushes off because, you know, this, this powder is pretty intense and it's easy to get one color starting to mix with another, which I do all the time. But it is um, nice to try and clean those brushes off, and so just rubbing them on a carpet square is good. Um, if you don't have that, though, you can use a little piece of a T-shirt um, material, obviously not one that you're currently wearing, but uh, an old one, a scrap, that works really well, um, or even a paper towel is fine. I also have a little silicone sheet here that I use as sort of my palette to mix some colors, but you don't have to use that. You can use um, a piece of paper or anything like that, no problemo. So I'm gonna move this over just a bit so that we get our palette a little closer in here, and I'm gonna start going, okay, what do I wanna do first? I usually tend to add the shadows first and then you know neutral colors and then pop with the highlight colors, but it's not like, super important that you do it any particular color. So I'm going to start off with, um, and there are so many colors of pan pastel. So essentially it's a, a pastel in this cake form. And I, obviously, as you can see, it gets very um, crunky as we go along. And I don't mind that. I don't mind a little bit of cross-contamination of colors. And I don't mind it getting messy like that. If you do, you can kind of sweep that away or blow it away if it bothers you. But I'm going to start with sort of a medium color brown, and there's so many of them. And I'm just going to start putting it in a few strategic areas. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just layering in the color um, while I have it rather thick on my brush. And then I'll go back and sort of finesse it. Um, and I'm trying to get around these little dots. I'm not trying to fill the dots with color. I'm just trying to get around them. And then I have tricks, you'll see, um, on how to make that color behave a little bit more. Um, we'll just put a little here and there. So the big blob of color first. And then once I've got it in a few areas that I want, uh, try to clean my brush off the best I can and start smoothing that out. So those of you who wear makeup will know that, you know, that's kind of what you do. You put your color on and then you sort of blend it. Um, with your brush, and I've got a lot of contaminant on, on that brush, so I'm going to go for this bigger one, which is a little less. It's got a different brown in there. I don't mind. I have a trick to get rid of some of that, so um, I'll just kind of clean my brush a little bit more and sort of smooth out what I've got going on there. And you notice that I am cleaning my brush frequently because this powders really build up on... Um, I lost a little dot there. Oops. Uh, they really build up on the brush. So you want to be cleaning it fairly frequently so you're not just spreading dirt all around. Now, having said that, one of the easiest mistakes to make is getting a little too enthusiastic about the brown. So let me get that ear so we can see what's going on in there. Um, because it, then it can start looking really muddy if you're not careful. Now, there's a couple ways of handling this. I'm going to start layering in more color on top of that so I'm not too worried about it and just build my color up because that's one thing that Pan Pastel does absolutely gorgeously is it lets you bring more and more colors on the top and just filling up the space. So that's one thing. The other thing you can do is use tape to lift off color where it doesn't belong. For example, here's just a piece of sticky tape and I'm just going to go rubbing there. For example, we got rid of that 
other brown that was floating in there. Not that it's a big deal, but it sickened me, so I got rid of it. And I'm going to take some of it away from the highlights of these little um, decorative buttony bits because I want to play with them a little bit more. So let's get rid of some on there. So you can see what it's doing. It's just picking that off. You can even do it here if you want some of those lines to show a little bit more. I use the tape constantly because it's just a really nice way to keep in control. On the nose is especially good place because uh, the nostril you want to fill, but you don't want the rest of it to be um, totally filled. So I think that works pretty nice. And then if you do have a nice clean brush, you can go back after that and kind of smooth a little bit to make it more soft and not so harsh of a line. You see how the tape leaves a bit of a harsh line there. So that lets me kind of smooth that up and maybe get rid of it in some places where it's a little bit too much. Okay, so now I've put my browns in there. Now, if I want, I can go back from here and do an even darker brown in some of the more intense areas, but I think I'll add my medium tones first and then maybe come back and do that. So washing, cleaning off my brush a bit. And I was thinking, we've got this sort of bright green here that can be the dragony color, and I also have some minty green. Um, I love these colors that have almost all white in them because they lay on the top of things really well. So a trick that I like to do is take something that's mostly white. Uh, so you have something like a really pale blue, a pale mint. Um, you also can use just plain old white, which obviously I've contaminated that a lot. Um, other pale colors like that. And I'm going to take a fairly thick amount of it, and I'm just going to start laying it right on top. And then I can use that almost as a base from uh, to which I can add other colors. I'm going to blow as I go along because it's getting on the background a little, and there's that's somewhat inevitable, so just try to keep, uh, keep on top of it by blowing away excess so it doesn't stick onto the, the uh, background or where you don't want it, and then you'll have your handy-dandy little uh, tape to take care of the rest. Now, it's sometimes easy to kind of obliterate the brown, so you may have to go back and, and add to it, but you see how we get like a bit of a nuance going on, so that now my browns aren't so harsh. They start looking a little bit more natural, which I like. Um, the, the neat thing about pan pastel is you cannot put too much on. In fact, the more you put on, the kind of better it ends up looking, I think. So I'm going to get rid of a little bit here that was an overspill here and here, and we'll just let the rest be as it is. It's okay. So again, cleaning my brush, I'm going in now and I'm smoothing some of those areas because it cakes up in some spaces. You want it to press down into your clay, not be laying on the top because that's just going to get, you know, rubbed off or blown away later. So you might as well get it where you want it. All right. So now let's pick another color. This is ultimately the color I want a little bit more of, but because I put that lighter base down, this is going to grab a lot better. So see what I'm doing there is I'm again, layering it in these interesting spots and I'll go back and kind of pick up the, the, the darks wherever it's gotten a little bit too much. But for now, I think this, this works really well of just laying this color on. So the more you lay on, the more intense it gets. And I have a plan for some of this overspill. I have already taken into account that this is gonna happen. So I haven't let it bother me too much. And I will use another color like blue or whatever to kind of compensate for that. So, you know, you kind of build that into the equation. All right, so now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at, okay, I've got some neat color here. I've built up sort of a, a natural look. Now we want some of the pops of interest. Um, I'm going to go back and put a little bit of a darker brown. So I've got a little bit off camera here of a nice deep brown. It's my opinion that most animals would wear mascara given the chance. So I like to add a little bit of uh, mascara to the eyeball. But really one of the reasons why I do it is just because I think it looks so nice to bring your attention to the eye. You know, the eye is, is kind of the focal point of any creature. So just making sure that the eye is very visible um, really helps you kind of lock into that animal and feel like it's real. So you notice what I did there is I did a couple of steps is I put that dark in. It was a little more than I wanted per se. Um, so I went and um, added some more of the light green and then the dark green again to kind of even that out um, just to 
instead of trying to take it away, I usually put more on. And I, I found that to be effective. So um, if that works for you, I think um, it, it works for me. So I think you might find that it works for you too. Now I'm going to go back with my little deeper brown and start adding some uh, contrast. Because it's always about contrast, isn't it? Lights and darks and um, uh, places for your eye to rest. It's getting a little dark right there. So I'm going to just come back with my light and put that on there um, as, as a way of blending it in. But yeah, those lights and darks, I think, make such a difference. Let's get a little bit more right in here. So what you're doing is you're sort of adding the shadowing. Now, I know that naturally when you look at it, it'll have its own shadowing, but sometimes you can manipulate that a little bit, which I think is kind of fun. All right, so we've got a pretty good nuance going on here. Now, one color that I don't have laid out here, which I am going to pull out right now, is a nice little pink because sometimes you want to add a little pinkiness around maybe like fingertips or inside ears. So I've got this lovely little fuchsia and here's where I'm going to use my palette is I'm going to take some of this white and just a tiny touch of that in between brown so we get um, not too bubblegum pink but a more believable pink and I am just going to add a little bit of uh, pink to that to sort of make a pale, lovely pink. Because we don't want it to be too clown, you know. Um, we want it just to be a, a little gentle bit. And let's put a little in the ear here. Just a touch. And I think a little bit more pink here. Get it just a bit brighter. Add just a touch on fingertips. So I think that's going to be enough. Sometimes I put it around the nostril, but um, there's so much other color going on around there. I don't think that's something we need to do. Just those little hints is, is plenty. Um, and I think I'll just take a little bit of the tape and do just a little bit of spot cleanup here and there of any excess that I can take away. But most of that's pretty good. All right, so now what we've got is he's floating on his background, which is good. But we can add a little bit of nuance to the background with our powders as well and give that a little bit more depth, I think, as, as well. So we don't want to kind of get rid of, that's the problem sometimes with getting too excited about your powders, is you tend to obliterate some of the fun things you've got going on with your clay. So you have to be careful about that. But what I'm going to do is mostly shadow underneath him to get rid of that little extra splatter and maybe a little bit in this bit here and leave the rest alone. So I'm using a dark, a deeper blue and a larger brush. And I'm going to start by taking quite a bit of powder. And, t and you notice how I've got it on just one side of the brush so that the unpowdered side can tuck right up underneath him without getting powder all over him. Because it's harder to get that blue off. So you want to kind of be careful about that. And I'm just going to kind of tuck a little bit here. Now, see, this is where Pan Pastel is so amazing. Look at the creaminess of that. Look how it just blends right in. It looks like the clay was always that color. And that is what I love. It's, it's intense enough to where it can pull that off beautifully. Let's get a little more around here. And same kind of thing. Keep your brush clean and blend it out. Look at that. Immediately look at how it pops that depth. I love what's going on there, so I'm not going to bother it too much, but I will get just a little bit more in here so that swirl has a bit of accent. The, the, the clay inside that swirl was a little goofy. And you can even take a little bit um, of the light green and kind of put it on the surface if you needed a bit more swoosh to that there, which I felt it needed. So that's, in essence, what you would need to do to use the pan pastel, except, oh, I forgot, there's one more thing, gold. Oh, we have to put a little bit of mica um, shine pan pastel. That's a whole nother series that they have. So they have all the regular colors, but then they have the metallics and the metallics have mica in it. So you get the shimmer as well. I'm going to put it on my fingertip because all I want to do is I want to tap it on the surface of these little buttons. And I don't want it to go anywhere else as much as I can keep it from that. Maybe a little bit on the lines there. I've got a little bit of overspill so I can blend that in or I can just let it be. Depends on whether it looks good or not. But you see how that just adds that little pop. Isn't that great? And maybe even a little bit along the ridge here of just a little bit. But I use I'm using my finger because I just want 
it to hit the surface and not go down in. If I use the brush, then it's going to go down into the cracks and crevices, and I don't want that. I want it only on the tip. By the way, if you're trying to get somewhere where it's a little bit too much for your fingers, you can just use a tool to kind of rub where you want it to go. So I'm going to get rid of a little bit of it there. There's a little more right there than I wanted. I'm trying to find a clean part of the tape. It's very easy to have um, <laughs> used up bits. And be careful because if you put the tape on other places, you'll, you'll take it off of uh, places that you've already been. And there's that last little touch. Isn't that nice? It's just a little bing and gives it just a, a bit of fun. He's got a little on his eyebrow there, but I kind of like it. All right, so there is a nice little tutorial overview of using your pan pastels, and uh, welcome to your new addiction. Enjoy. <laughs>